Hey guys, welcome to another video with Claire from Honestly Ophelia Vintage. I am here to talk to you today about reselling on eBay and Etsy. Those are my two top platforms at the moment. I do dabble a little bit in Amazon, but um, not so much recently. You know, that's something that's kind of just when I find the weird random item that maybe fits only on Amazon as a category. So I wanted to start a new video series. My channel is fairly new, but I wanted to do something fun um, that could be kind of a repeated segment. Um, and so what I'd like to do is call it Coffee with Claire. And hopefully um, what the plan would be is to just have a cup of coffee with you guys, talk to you about what I'm reselling and some, you know, specific topic um, that I'm particularly interested in in the moment. Because uh, as a reseller, you kind of go through phases of different things that you're interested in, but you kind of absorb all of that knowledge and have it in the back of your brain. So it's kind of fun to share it with other resellers. So today I want to share with you a topic that is one of my particularly favorites, um, and that is reselling scarves. So buying and selling scarves is really fun because it's something that anyone can do. Uh, it's not a particularly difficult field. Basically, you just have to use your eyes <laughs> and determine uh, if a scarf is worth grabbing. So I love scarves. I have a mountain of them, which you can't currently see because I particularly block them out on purpose. But I have a mountain of scarves that need to be listed. I have um, quite a few up in my Etsy shop, and I've sold a few this week alone. So scarves are kind of a bread and butter item. I know you might think, aren't scarves just outdated? Aren't they just what little old ladies wear? Well, guess what? No, scarves still have quite the following. Um, and it just depends on the subject matter. It depends on all sorts of things. So I'm going to share with you six things to look for when you're out shopping the scarf section at your local thrift store. So um, just to begin, one thing to look for is interesting subject matter. I'm going to take a sip of coffee and then I'm going to show you some scarves. Okay. We all know that there are people in the world who love particular subject matter and they love wearing it. They love accessorizing with it. So one thing is, um, just for example, animal print. This scarf is not a super thrilling scarf, right? It's just got some animal print border. It's see-through. The designer is Echo, okay? Echo's not really, um, you know, a super fascinating brand or anything like that, but why would I pick this up? It's because of the border that is in animal print, because there are animal print devotees out there. All right, just like there's animal print devotees, there are Disney fans. And this amazing scarf has a bunch of the dwarves on it from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This is actually a vintage scarf. It is from the Disney store. And as you can see, it's 100% silk made in Korea. So that right away tells me that this is something older because most things are made in China now. Um, and this is all silk and this is huge. I mean, I could wear it like a giant shawl, you know? So this one is really fun and I have big hopes for this. I'm probably going to be listing this one on eBay because I want to see where it goes. I don't think I'll do auction, uh, only because auctions don't seem to be working very well lately. So anyways, Disney. The third subject matter I have is something that's really trendy right now. Keep an eye out on trending subject matters. It kind of changes from season to season, year to year. So just be aware of that. But right now, mushrooms are super hot. So this scarf has mushrooms all over it. Can you see that? Again, it's not any exciting maker. It's just a really appealing subject matter. And this one is fun. It's unusual. It's actually a bunch of buildings. They're all put together. Let's see who this maker is. Costco scarves. I don't, I'm not actually familiar with that. Um, 
but it's really neat. It's black and white. It's got buildings and interesting detailing. So that is why I grabbed that one. And finally, we have animals. There are certain animal lovers out there who they search for, you know, maybe they are like me, a giraffe lover. I love giraffes. I have a lot of giraffe stuff. So maybe they go out and they search for a giraffe scarf. Um, this one is cats. It's really cute, simple. But some cat lover will probably snatch this up. And when it comes to pricing scarves, it really depends on the material and the maker and the subject matter. But for something like this, I would probably put it up around $20. So again, they're not going to make you millionaires, but they are something that um, is easily accessible no matter where you live in the country. And it's something that is a bread and butter item. So not everyone who's going to, sh you know, be shopping online can afford a $100 item or a $50 item. Maybe they're just looking for a $20 item. And that's what the, you know, the beauty of a scarf is, is it's something really cool for not a whole lot of money. All right. The second um, thing to be on the lookout for when you're scarf shopping are artists. So me different museums will produce scarves sometimes. Maybe you'll find a Monet scarf or a Van Gogh or something like that. These particular ones are Picasso. And these were from my aunt. She gave me these. She actually gave me a lot of scarves. Um, and these are really cool. And they have Pablo Picasso designs. And right here it says Picasso. So keep an eye out for stuff like that. Um, particular artists do have a following as well. So there's someone out there who loves Pablo Picasso. Or who just likes art and is gonna think wow that's really cool I get to wear that around my neck another Picasso this one's kind of hard to see but it's sheer very long okay so keep an eye out for various artists the third is souvenir scarves so you can get scarves from all over the world and a lot of these are vintage uh, they're from various countries or whatever the case may be. Like this one has the Caribbean Sea. It has um, Italy. It has all kinds of, you know, interesting little details on it. And it's really fun. Um, and someone will absolutely love this. So there are collectors of souvenir scarves. I have one in my skip shop right now that is from Canada, from Quebec, and it has all of these monuments from all over Quebec. It's super cool. So people love stuff like that. They like to be able to, you know, show that they went somewhere or maybe it's nostalgic for them or maybe they just collect souvenir scarves. All right, and then the fourth item I have are what I call babushka scarves. I'm Polish, so I don't know. That's just what I call them. But those are kind of like the very large shawl like scarves and they're kind of they have an ethnic look to them they're um they might look you know polish or they might look um latino i don't know something like that but they're really on you know they're really bold and pretty and and beautiful and they're just large scarves so this i would probably put more like 25 dollars on this and the ones that are made out of wool can be worth a little bit more. So this one's not wool. This is actually just acrylic, but again, it's one of those big scarves. So, and then it's not even just that people wear these. People also use them as home decor. So keep an eye out for those as well. And then I'm just looking at my notes here. I got my little notepad. The fifth thing to look for are silks. Uh, silk is probably one of the most sought after fabrics when it comes to scarves. Uh, not all silks were necessarily made, you know, silk scarves were made by a particular designer, but they're just desirable because they are 100% silk. Uh, this is a really cool one, again, from my aunt. 
and it's got um, kind of the wheel with all of the different, no, my mind is drawing a blank as to what those are called, but the zodiac sign, <laughs> there it is, zodiac symbols. So this one's really cool and it's got uh, a tag in the corner that does identify it as 100% all silk. Maybe a little hard to read. Um, and it's just, they're just beautiful and they're sought after and they were usually made in Europe or this, in this case, India for this one. Um, another one, this is all silk. It's kind of sheer with these metallic detailing on it. Um, super pretty. And then this one I love. It's got this oriental look to it. Um, and kind of a lot of like village scenes going on here. Let's show you. And then here's, this one has a modern tag on it, but it does say 100% silk. Okay. And then finally, this is another all silk. Again, these don't have any recognizable makers. They're just beautiful and collectible on the fact that they're silk. So this one has birds and plants. And if I look at, I usually keep pricing on them until I'm ready to list them. So this one was $2. Um, I know I normally do not pay more than probably around three to $4 for a scarf because the, the flip is not going to be that much. So, all right. And the sixth and final thing to look for when you're searching for scarves, it might seem kind of obvious, uh, is just a particular designer. There are vintage designers and there are modern designers, but many of them are desirable and sought after by collectors. So the first one I want to share with you is Vera Newman. Vera Newman is probably my favorite kind of scarf to find and pick up. She was a designer, I want to say from the late... 50s through the late 80s so um she they did reproduce some in a target line years later but I try not to pick those up if I can tell that they're more modern so I am um, Vera did all kinds of scarves she did sheer ones like this where I can see right through it and what you want to look for when you're searching for Vera in the racks of scarves is this signature. It's always going to be in the bottom of one of the corners of the scarves. And this one does have a ladybug, which is kind of exciting because not all of them have the ladybug. And that helps to date it. So if you go and you Google how to date a Vera Newman scarf, uh, it'll tell you depending on if the ladybug's there, if it's not there, how old the scarf is. So she did some sheer ones like this, but she also did solid, um, as in not see-through, <laughs> but this is definitely not solid. It's, it's an abstract design, and this one's currently listed in my shop around $25, I think, because this is a very unique design. She did these incredible abstract paintings and many people love the abstract ones in particular so again let me show you the signature in the bottom corner to be on the lookout for this one has a ladybug as well and then on the back it says scarves by vera which is another way to identify it not all of them will have that tag though so I'm just going to show you one more example of a Vera so that you can kind of get a feel for them. They're just really beautiful and they're one of my favorite things. And again, this is only $2 and I'll probably sell it for around $20. So Vera, you can get more for a Vera scarf on Etsy than you can on eBay. So I prefer to sell them on Etsy. Here's the signature and here's the design. So from far away, this might not look like a super exciting scarf, but I grab any and all Vera's that I find. The only exception might be um, solid Vera's, ones that are just plain red or plain blue, and they're not very exciting. So 
but I grab pretty much anything else than Spirit Even. All right, another designer to be on the lookout for when you're searching for scarves is Oscar de la Renta. Um, clothing of Oscar de la Renta might be pretty hard to find, but his scarves, not necessarily. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous scarf. I love all these pastel colors, big flowers. And his scarf is, um, I'm sorry, his signature is kind of small, but you can spot it because it's very curvy and it's just this tiny little signature, Oscar de la Renta down in the corner. So, and I found these in podunk little towns where there's, you know, most people would say, oh, there's nothing to find there, but you can find them. They're out there. I'll show you one more Oscar de la Renta real quick. This is more of the long, skinny, maybe this would be used in your hair or used as a belt even. So here is the signature, Oscar de la Renta. And this one's so pretty, it's got butterflies. Anyways, I love scarves. I think they're fun because they're like, for me, little pieces of art. And I don't know how to wear a scarf properly. I probably won't keep them for myself, but I like to sell them because I think they're beautiful and they're something that's kind of um, unusual and and fun. So the third is symphony scarves. Symphony scarves are pretty common. They're not um, going to bring you a ton of money, but they are kind of in the better quality area of scarves because there are a lot of silk ones um, and they do have a lot of time to have really fun subject matter. So here is, this is just a beautiful pink paisley scarf by Symphony. Um, I love this. I just grabbed it mostly because of the color. This room is not really showing it super well, but it is just this fantastic bright pink. And here is Symphony, the signature in the bottom corner. So I'll show you one more Symphony scarf. This one's a little more interesting because it has cats. Who doesn't love cats, right? And then they're on the beach, kind of enjoying the sunshine with sunglasses. And here is the symphony signature again. So that's kind of a double whammy. It's symphony and it's a great subject matter. All right, and then Lily Pulitzer did a lot of designers do scarves so I'm not gonna obviously be able to give you an exhaustive list but here's just some this is a Lily Pulitzer scarf you can tell by these bright colors she loves her bright colors and this was actually a collab with Ford Motors oddly enough um and here is the Lily signature oh if I can hold it still See that Lily? I don't find a lot of her clothing, unfortunately, but that scarf is pretty cool because it's on my Lily. Okay, last but not least, a modern designer who also does scarves is Betsy Johnson. So Betsy Johnson um, does some pretty, she has a lot of expensive clothing for resale, reselling, um, and this is a Betsy Johnson skull scarf. So really cool it's got all of these skulls against like this pastel shimmery pink background so that's a fun subject matter even if this wasn't Betsy Johnson even if it was just skulls I would probably pick it up because there are people who love their clothing to have skulls on it so yeah okay everybody that is all I have for you today so thanks for joining in and Hopefully uh, you'll get to see my new intro to my videos. If it works, my husband helped me design a little intro to kind of make my videos recognizable when you turn it on and it has this fun music. And anyways, you'll see, hopefully, if we can get it to work. So have a great day, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed learning about six things to look out for when you go scarf shopping and um, have fun and go out there and find some cool stuff. Talk to you later. Bye.